If you have been into building cool websites, there is no way you haven't come across this masterpiece. This website didn't just win site of the day, but site of the year too. And of course, it's packed with some seriously impressive animations and in today's video, we are going to break down one of them. Since we covered shaders in the last video, we are not going in that direction again. But what we are going to do is build this awesome scroll animation that reveals floating cards in a 3D fashion as you scroll using Next.js, GSAP and scroll trigger. I have built a very similar replica of this scroll animation and I am going to show you how you can build something just like this. We'll go step by step. First, we'll pin the section, then spread the cards by adjusting their position and rotation tied to the scroll and finally flip them in 3D while resetting their rotation, all using the USD sap hook and of course scroll trigger. If you are enjoying the content, make sure to leave a like on the video and maybe subscribe if you want more Next.js tutorials. Also, if you want to access the source code for all the tutorials, check out the pro membership. Link is in the description. There is a vanilla JS version of this animation there too. Alright, without wasting any more time, let's dive in. Let's begin by setting up a fresh next app using create next app. Once that's done, I'll run npm run dev to fire up the local server so we can dive straight into the project. With the server up and running, the first step is to clean up the boilerplate code. We'll start by cleaning up the CSS. Head over to the global CSS file and the module CSS file and clear out all the default styles. I'm also going to wipe the page component clean so we can start from scratch. Now let's set up the assets we'll need for this project. We'll only be using one image so I'll create a public folder and drop the image in there. It's the image we'll be using as the front of the card. I downloaded it from Freepik and I'll include the link in the description in case you want to grab it too. Alright, with the basics out of the way, let's move on to the next step, defining the page structure. Let's begin by removing any unnecessary imports as we won't be needing those. Next, we are going to add three sections, the hero section, the card section and the footer. For the hero section and the footer, I'll just drop in some placeholder text as h1 elements and that's it. Now let's add the cards. For that, we'll map over an array of 4 cards and dynamically render each one. We are simply looping through an array of 4 elements and rendering the card component for each one. Each card will have its own ID and image for the front and some placeholder text on the back. Next up, let's actually define the card component so we can see something on the page. I'm going to create a new file called card.jsx for this. It will be a simple functional component. This component is straightforward, we are using the next image to load the card image. Now let's set up the structure of the card. We'll start with a div that has a class name of card and also give it an id. This parent class will be what we use to update the position on scroll. Next, we'll add another wrapper called card wrapper. This is where we'll apply the floating CSS animation. Now, we could apply the animation directly on the parent class but that might interfere with the positioning. So it's better to keep it separated on another wrapper. After that, we'll add one more wrapper and this one will be called flip card inner. This is where we'll apply the 3D transformations for the flip animation. Now we'll divide the content into two parts, one for the card front and one for the back. For the card front, it's just going to be an image. Make sure to define it as priority or else you will get the LCP warning if the image is above the fold. We'll also set the source along with the default width and height and the alt text all of which will come from the component props. For the card back, it's just going to have some dummy text which will also come from the props. And that's pretty much it for the structure. Finally, make sure you import the card component into the page where we are rendering it. Now that the structure is ready, we can jump into the styling. First, let me import a custom font called Instrument Serif. This will give the text a clean modern look throughout the project. Next, we set some basic global styles. By resetting the margins, padding and setting box sizing to border box, we ensure consistent spacing across all elements. For the HTML and body, we are setting that width and height to 100% and applying the Instrument Serif font. You'll notice that the height is set to 500 viewport height 
This is because we need some extra space for the scroll effect. Specifically, we are dedicating 100 viewport height each to hero and the footer section which totals 200 viewport height. The remaining 300 viewport height is for the card section as we are going to pin that section and will need room for the scroll interaction. Inside the container, we are making it fill the full width and height of the viewport. For the images, we are making sure they take up the full width and height of their container and use object fit cover to maintain the aspect ratio so they don't get stretched. The section elements have a relative position taking up the full width and height of the viewport and we have set a blue background color to keep things simple. Now, for the H1 elements inside the hero section and footer, we center them both horizontally and vertically using the transform trick with a white color, large font size and light font weight. Now let's focus on the card. We set the position to absolute to center it on the screen using top and left properties then applying the same transform technique to ensure it's perfectly centered. The width is 240 pixels, the height is set to 360 pixels and we set a perspective of 1000 pixels which will be crucial for the 3D flip effect. For the text inside the card, we center it in a similar way and give it a medium font size of 20 pixels with a bit of weight. Next, we add a card wrapper inside the card, also centered using absolute positioning. This is where we'll apply the floating animation, giving it a smooth up and down movement. The animation runs on a 3 second loop with an ease in out effect. To give each card a slightly different feel, we have added small delays to the animation on each card starting with no delay on the first card then 0.2 seconds, 0.4 seconds and 0.6 seconds on the others, creating a staggered floating effect. Now let's talk about the 3D flip effect. We are applying the transform style Preserve 3D to the flip card inner to ensure that the child elements front and back are rendered in 3D space. Both the flip card front and flip card back elements take up the full card size and we have hidden the back face of each with back face visibility hidden. The back is rotated by 180 degrees so that it flips correctly when the animation runs. The card bag gets a background color and some padding to make the text stand out. Finally, we define the keyframes for the floating animation. It starts at the card's original position, then moves them slightly upward at 50% and returns to the original spot at 100%, creating that smooth floating motion. And that's it for the styling. Next, let's add the plugins we'll need for this project. I'll open the terminal and installed React Lenis from Studio Fright for smooth scrolling along with GSAP and GSAP React for the use GSAP hook. Once the dependencies are installed, we'll head back to our project and start importing everything we need. First, I'll add the use client directive at the top of the file since we are working with a client side component. You can skip this if you prefer to use use rep without needing cleanup functions for scroll trigger. Next, I'll import the necessary hooks, use effect and use ref. I'll also import React Lenis from React Lenis, GSAP, scroll trigger and of course the use GSAP hook that we'll be using to control our animations. First, let's add smooth scrolling to our page. To do that, all you need to do is wrap the entire page inside the React Lenis component. And just like that, we have added smooth scrolling to our page. Now let's define the references that will drive our animations. We'll create two refs, one for the container and one for the cards. The card ref will be an array, so it can point to all the cards individually. After that, we need to pass these refs to the appropriate elements. For the container, I'll attach the ref directly, as for the cards, we'll pass the ref dynamically inside the map function. 
This is adding each card element to the card refs array. It will hold a reference to all the card elements and we are assigning each card to its respective index in the array as we loop through them. So essentially each card gets its own unique reference that we can use later in our animations. Next, let's move over to the card component and adjust it to work with the ref. We'll need to import forward ref from react. This allows us to forward a ref from the parent component into the child component, which in our case is the card. By using forward ref, we are able to pass the ref directly into the card so we can target it during animations. Now that everything is set up properly, we are ready to start building the main animation. So let's set the use this app hook and set the scope to the container. This hook makes it easier to integrate with gsap functions and I've shown it in action in one of my previous videos. But to be honest, there aren't many examples out there even on the gsap forums on how to properly use this hook with scroll trigger. But we'll make sure that it works. And you could also use a simple use effect but let's stick with this to avoid the experts giving us grief. So inside this hook, we are going to break the animation into three parts, pin the section, spread the cards and finally flip them. But before we get into that, we need to define a few key variables that will control our animations. First, we grab the array of card elements we referenced earlier using card refs. Next, we are setting the total scroll height to the three times the height of the window. This gives us a long enough scroll duration to spread and flip the cards gradually as the user scrolls. Then we have two arrays. The positions array defines the percentage positions where each card will land and the rotations array sets how much each card will rotate as we animate them. Now I'll be honest with you, I had to play around with the position values a bit to get them just right. They are based on the width and height of the cards, so you might have to tweak them if you change those dimensions. The goal is to make sure the cards are evenly spaced out and look visually balanced. So if you make any adjustments to the card size, just be aware that you'll probably need to adjust these values too. With those variables in place, we are ready to start with the first part, pinning the card section. We want the section to stay fixed while we scroll through 300 viewport height of space, which gives us enough room to spread and animate the cards. So we are triggering the cards container, which is the section we want to pin. The animation starts when the top of the card section hits the top of the viewport. It stays pinned until we scroll through the total height, which is 300 viewport height. Pin being set to true makes sure that the section stays fixed in the place while we scroll and pin spacing set to true ensures that the rest of the page still scrolls smoothly. This gives us a smooth pinning effect, creating a space where we can animate the cards without affecting the rest of the page layout. Now that we have pinned the card section, let's move on to the next part, spreading the cards across the screen. For that, we are looping through each card using for each function and for each card, we are animating two properties, left and rotation. The left property is set to a value from the positions array. This determines where each card is placed horizontally on the screen. The rotation property is set to a value from the rotations array which controls how much each card rotates during the scroll. Next, we define the scroll trigger instance for each card. The trigger is still the card's container. We are starting the animation at the top of the viewport. The animation ends after scrolling through the height of the window. We add scrub and set it to 0.5 which creates that smooth synced scroll effect as you move up and down the page. Lastly, we assign an ID for each card's animation so we can keep track of them individually. By doing this, each card smoothly spreads out across the screen, rotating into its position as the user scrolls. Now that we have pinned and spread the cards, it's time for the final part, flipping the cards into 3D and resetting their rotation with a staggered effect. We are looping through each card again, but this time we are focusing on the front and back elements of the card. Each card has two main sections, flip card front and flip card back. These are what will be rotating in opposite directions to create that 3D flip effect. To add some staggering, we define a stagger offset, which is just a small delay for each card's flip animation. The cards won't all flip at the same time 
each one will have a slight delay to create a smooth cascading effect. This stagger offset is based on the cards index, so the more cards there are, the longer the overall stagger will be. Next, we define two points in the scroll timeline, start offset and end offset. These determine when each card's flip animation will start and end during the scroll. The flip starts around one third into the scroll and finishes by two thirds, with each card having its own staggered range. Now, for the actual flipping, we create another scroll trigger, but this time we are tracking the progress of the scroll with the on update hook. The scroll progress is stored, which is a value between 0 and 1. If the scroll progress is between the start offset and end offset for a given card, we calculate animation progress, which gives us a value between 0 and 1 to control the flip's smoothness. The front of the card rotates from 0 to minus 180 degrees as you scroll. The back of the card rotates from 180 degrees to 0, creating the seamless flip. Meanwhile, the entire card continues to rotate according to its initial rotation value from our earlier array, but we gradually reduce this rotation as the card flips. For that, we are using GSAP's two function where the front and back are rotated on the y axis using rotate y which gives us that 3d flip effect we also adjust the x percent and y percent to ensure the card remains centered during the flip and we use rotate to reset the card's rotation as it completes its flip the scrub is set to one to ensure that the animations are tied to the scroll meaning they'll move fluidly with the user scroll progress making the effect smooth and interactive and with that, each card flips smoothly in 3D as you scroll through the section, resetting its rotation for a clean finish. Finally, we need to add a cleanup function to make sure everything is properly reset when the component unmounts. What we are doing here is simple but important. Inside the use effect hook, we are returning a cleanup function that runs when the component is unmounted. This cleanup function loops through all active scroll trigger instances and kills them. This prevents any memory leaks that could affect the performance of your app, especially if you navigate away from the page. So there you have it, we have built a smooth scroll animation that spreads and flips cards in 3D style using Next.js, GSAP and Scroll Trigger. If you enjoyed this tutorial, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you want more videos like this. See you in the next one.